It is love that brings us together. It is good to be together. Would you bow with me for a moment of prayer? Father, what love, what inspiration, what joy. Father, we just thank you for your son who gave his life upon the cross, Father, for our sins, Father. Father, there's no joy. Father, Jesus died on the cross for our sins, Father. Father, Jesus and his love will stand the test of, of time, Father. Father, we're living in times, Father, that are crucial, Father. And there's one hope, and it's in him. And it's in his name we do pray, and amen. Just as I am without one peace, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb. hymns that uh, has ever been written there's so much in it so much thought why I am comes through that hymn why I am I am because I have been healed I am because I have been saved I am because my sins have been forgiven I am 
because I enjoy the grace of God. I am because I have the mercy of God in my life. I am because we know that we are all the temple of God's spirit. Amen. Why I am? One I am because I am a part of this wonderful body of Christ that we celebrate. This communion that we talked about, Jesus bringing us together. I am for this moment in time. I get to live in one of the greatest of all moments of time. Yeah, things are kind of messed up when you look around. I'm not totally happy about everything that I see around. But I get to live this moment. Paul had to remind the church in Corinth that now is the time. It was a struggle for them. They lived in a far more difficult time than I can imagine. They lived in a time where the Roman Empire had conquered the world. Most people were enslaved to the Roman Empire. If you weren't a Roman citizen, you were nobody. Rome controlled and did anything that they wanted to. And so Paul comes to the church in Corinth. He, he says to them, and I put the passage up for you, we work together with God so that we're asking you not to receive God's grace and then do nothing with it. Church in Corinth had to be reminded it's not a time to do nothing. Not the best of times. Not the worst of times. But it was hard times. And they had to remind them that we have this grace of God. I am because Jesus has saved me. Not to set back. But to give me an opportunity to do something remarkable. He says, when I showed you my favor, I heard you. On the day I saved you. I helped you. He quotes from the prophet Isaiah. Eight centuries before Paul would write these words, he pulls up the words of Isaiah and reminds them that eight centuries before, God reminded a people, the Israelites, I saved you, I helped you. And it wasn't just to say how nice you are. It was so that you could live in a moment and you could make a difference for that time. So Paul summarizes by telling, by saying to them, I tell you, I tell you, Corinthians, now is the time. Now is the time that God shows his favor. Now is the day that he saves. God has not quit saving. The world is not so messy that God has stepped back from the world and said, go do your thing. God's still involved. God's still here. God's still active. God still touches lives. God still does things that sometimes we don't quite understand, but he's very much at work. But yet at times we ask ourselves, why now? Why am I here now? Why is all that's happening now? And I think there's some good answers for us. I want you to consider these answers. And the reason that I'm asking you to consider these answers in two weeks is a National Back to Church Sunday. There's 30,000 churches in the United States that are going to be participating in Back to Church Sunday. When Back to Church Sunday started in 2009, there were just roughly about 600 churches that participated. Here in Dayton, there was about 20 to 25 of us. We were one of those that participated. This year, 2016, there will be over 100 churches in Dayton participating. Such a revival is taking place. Such a revival to touch lives in Dayton, to reach out and to do things, not the same old way, but to affect lives and to, to touch lives. There are 850,000 people in this metropolitan area. There are 350,000 homes in this metropolitan area. Every home is going to have an invitation to back to church Sunday. Starting in, in uh, roughly about 10 days, the invitations will go out. Every address, there will be an invitation. You're invited to church on the 18th. And following that up will be some things that we will be doing in our immediate area to tie into that back to church things. To tie in, to let people know that that yes, we want to invite you. We don't want you to miss out on the wonderful opportunities of the grace and the mercy that God is offering to us. We want you to know that blessed one Amen. who arose from the grave. Yes. Yes. Why now? Let me run through some thoughts with you. First, because we have been called by God. 
You're no accident. None of you are. You're not insignificant. You're not unimportant. You're special to God. You have heard his call. You have responded. You chose to lift up your voice, to give your time to worship and to honor this Lord Jesus who died to save us from our sins and arose from the grave to give us hope beyond measure. We're called. We're called. God has not quit calling us. God has never deserted us. God has never quit inviting us to, to reach out and to take advantage of the opportunities that he offers to us. Second, because we believe there is meaning behind the circumstances. There's all sorts of views of God. And when you, when you philosophically, you get to talk about there's a view that God sits on a throne and, and kind of says, okay, go about the creation the way you want to do what you want. There's a view that says, oh, my goodness, you know, if God sees something, he just kind of jumps in. And if he doesn't want to, he doesn't. If he wants to, he does. But you see in Jesus, I find something out about God. The promise is that no matter what is going on, God is always at work to do good. That's right. Hallelujah. What does that mean? That means that God doesn't remove himself from his creation. It means that God does not leave his creation and says kind of, well, if I want to get involved, I get involved. It means that God never takes a vacation. God never takes a day off. God never takes a second off. God is always involved Amen. in this creation and in each of our lives. Amen. God is at work. Now, I don't understand everything. There are a lot of things I don't understand. I didn't particularly like taking calculus in high school. I didn't quite catch that too well. Physics was a real struggle. And all that Latin that I took in high school that nobody, any you of know, you know Latin anymore? No, none of us do. I think about all the, a lot of things I don't understand why things have changed. I don't understand why certain things are this way or that way. But what I do know is I have a God that says I will never desert you. You're my creation. We've each been created in the image of God. Oh, yeah, I know we look different. We dress different. We talk different. You know, some of you talk with different accents, and then you come listen to a preacher that grew up in Oklahoma, and his accent's kind of weird at times. I know that. We're all different, but that's okay because we're all created in the image of God. There is that part of us that God said, I will give you a part of me so that you can live. Hallelujah. Amen. Another because for you to consider. Because we believe in God's plan for the world. One of the greatest of all thoughts that God ever said was he said, my desire, my goal is for everyone to stay with me. Or if you please, the way we translate that passage, that God desires that all be saved and none be lost. But you see, being saved is about a relationship with God. Being saved is about knowing this wonderful one who created us, who molds us and shapes us and, and is there for us to touch our lives. This wonderful God of ours said, I made you, I created you. I know you're not going to understand everything, but I want you to know that I love you, and more than anything else, I want us to always to be together. Amen. You see, God's not just a God of love. God is love. That's right. Hallelujah. When you think of love, all the purity, you see. Now, again, I don't understand all the evil that takes place. I don't understand all the stupid things that I see done. But I always know there's a God. He's massaging. He's molding. He's shaping. He's putting things together. He's causing good to happen when I don't always see the good. Our God has a plan for all of us. And that is that we get to spend beyond the concept of time with God in a relationship in the very presence of the purity of love. 
where evil will no longer touch us, where evil can no longer destroy us. And another because, because we have been called to be servants. A few moments ago, we had communion together. We remember Jesus. Jesus, born of virgin birth, lived a life of walking this earth, preaching and teaching in ways that that many people didn't understand. At times they looked at Jesus and they said, what is wrong with you? How can you teach that way? He could say things like, blessed be the peacemakers. He could say to people, the greatest of all things that one might do is lay down one's life for those that they love. He could look at at someone and reach out, touch their lives that no one else wanted around. There were people that others hated in this world. And Jesus would sit down and have dinner with them. And he would so change their lives by what he taught, what he showed to them. And in the midst of getting ready to go to the cross, and I mentioned just the leading into all that when I talked about the communion for just a moment before we partook. You see, Here he is, headed to the cross, headed to his death. If you knew where you were going to die, what would you do? You think about the different things that you might want to do. Well, what Jesus did is he took a towel, he took some water, he got down on his knees, and he washed his disciples' feet. You see, Jesus understood and showed us the understanding of servanthood. And he summarized it by saying, I've come to serve and not to be served. I am a servant. I am called to do something. And that is to touch lives. You have this opportunity in this moment to be the servant, the one to touch a life, to make a difference. We have the clip. Prayer theme is a time to remember. God, please remind me who I am, that I am your child, your child first by divine creation and then by incontestable reclamation through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, please remind us who we are, that we are the eternally saved, those rescued from certain death by our Savior's sacrifice and given the chance to live through the grace of our Creator. God, please remind us what we are, that we are your church, the body of believers made possible only by Jesus, brought together by and built upon the indestructible foundation of your love. God, please remind us what we do, that we work together with you, our God, to share the good news of Jesus with all those who are lost, all those searching for the light in a world grown dark. God, please remind us why we are, that we have been called by you, chosen because we believe in your plan of salvation for the world because we believe that there is meaning behind all. God, please remind us why we are, that we are here to live as testimony to your amazing grace, to shout from the mountaintops of your love, to be the unfailing love of Jesus in this place. God, please remind us that now is the time, that now is always the time, because you, our God, our eternal, have always been and always will be and save us anew each day. Right. Because you, our God, answer your creation's call for help every day. Right. Because you, our God, show your favor every day. Right. Because you, our God, save your people yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, uh, quickly, next Sunday, uh, back to church, uh, we'll finish what I started today. Uh, give you some more details at 9.30 today. I talked more about the extensive program. I'm not going to do that next time, but we do have some things to cover uh, next Sunday. The 18th is coming. As I said, everybody in Dayton will get an invitation to church, 350,000 invitations. And those are going out not because we funded it, but because somebody in Dayton, and I don't, they never did tell us who it was, said they were so excited about back to church they have funded the whole process and so it it is such a unique blessing that god has given to us and we're the only city in the united states doing this now the back to church is everywhere there'll be churches every every city participating 
but we're the only community that's making an effort because of this generous gift to reach everybody in the community. And we get to be a part of that. Amen. And I cannot tell you what an excitement that is for me to know what's going to be happening and, and what will happen in, in the weeks to come. So uh, be sure you take this with you. Be sure that you pray about it. Uh, and we'll share a little more information. Next Sunday will be our last Sunday before the 18th. And so I'll have some things to hand out to you so that we can all participate, so that we can all touch some lies and, and let God use us because we've yes. been called uh, by our God. He's saving us and not to be peaceful, but to extend us out and to take place and to, to, be the, to take advantage of the opportunities that have been given to us. So. That's right.